everyone. It is Evan here from The Trade Risk on Friday, April 18th, April 19th, here with a weekend market recap video. We're going to cover all of the major markets, the current market environment, and finish off looking at some sector analysis. So markets are closed here on Friday. Good Friday. So we got the long weekend to enjoy. Four days worth of trading. Markets ended mixed on the week. If we look here at some of the numbers on Thursday session, you can see it was a mixed uh, mixed session here as well. Uh, and on the five-day numbers, still mostly positive, but we do have the IWM, which is starting to lag. You can see it is now back below its 10-period SMA. All of the other uh, major indices are still pretty much holding up. And if we scroll down here and look at some of the sectors that's been contributing to this performance, it's semiconductors, industrials, and financials. That's a good three for the top uh, performers over the past five days. On the downside, however, though, we got uh, this this unwind here in, in biotech and healthcare, uh, and then we have utilities and energy. So we're going to discuss those uh, in just a little bit. When we look at some of the major markets, we have China, emerging markets, Markets and U.S. equity spy up here on the top three. And on the downside, we have still volatility coming out, natural gas and gold. So let's jump into the charts here. S&P 500, this is the weekly time frame and, you know, not a whole lot changed. It was a short week, um, not much changed this week. Take a look at this week's trading, this candle. In fact, if I zoom in here, you can see there's just not much range to speak of. It tried to pop up and kind of continue in this in this trend. It pulled back a little bit, probe lower, ultimately closed kind of exactly where we opened. So it was really a, a, a very muted session here or muted week, minus 0.08% as earnings season sort of kicks off uh, and or really kind of gets into full swing. We do have the uh, MACD up here still making new highs. So we still have kind of positive momentum. We have momentum still at our back in this longer term trend. We are still holding above 2872 and 2800 even more importantly. So we still have technical support and technical kind of trend momentum at the bull's favor. And we are just underneath these all time highs here. We've been talking about this as being a, a magnet uh, for price to sort of retest. We're approximately 1% away. It could happen, you know, certainly as early as next week. A 1% move is, is not out of the question. Uh, but how it reacts up here at highs, you know, that's going to be the key question. You could you could make a case where, you know, the S&P 500 is still pretty much uh, gone nowhere since September of last year. Uh, and even if you consider September, just a brief kind of breakout over over the January highs, you know, you can make a case that more or less, of course, not exactly that the market really hasn't gone too far over the past, uh, you know, year and three months or so. Uh, it topped out in January 18, around 2880. We're at 2900. So, you know, more or less a lot of sideways, a lot of big moves uh, in both directions. But, you know, S&P re returning to these prior highs, we're going to want to see how those react. So that is the S&P 500 bigger levels 2942 2872 that's the range I'm watching. If we go down to the shorter time frame here and we just look at the daily chart you can see that uh, we spent just, again, a most of the time moving sideways here and uh, really kind of just waiting to see how the market makes up its mind. If it starts to lose, you know, 20, you know, the lows from, let's call it Thursday next week, and we start moving back down towards 2872 and breaking below, then we have some type of, uh, you know, at least near-term support break and a slight trend break in the short term. And that's something for us to sort of jump on board of if you're active, if you're tactical, if you're looking for those short opportunities, then you'd have the technicals kind of breaking down there, giving you that entry. But uh, as we well, uh, or as we should be well aware of is, you know, every time the market has sort of gone sideways or pulled back for two or three days, it tends to find that magical bid and the market, you know, is, is ultimately higher just a few days later. So as it stands here, we have, uh, you know, the S&P still kind of holding on, moving sideways, really just biding its time, waiting to see which way this breaks and earnings might be the catalyst for it one way or the other. Uh, but we're above that 2872. We're still below the all-time highs around 2941. That's the range. Those are the levels I'd be paying attention to and uh, really just waiting for that pickup in range. Now, the IWM is the slightly more concerning market right now as it is starting to, uh, well, 
while, while it did underperform this week and is starting to, you know, potentially roll back over here, we were looking at this, you know, 156 to 155 area. These were pr the prior highs here from the mid-March. We kind of climbed above them over the past couple of weeks, but then we're sort of stalling out and now potentially rolling over here. Again, this isn't the worst looking uh, set up in the world for in terms of at least a longer term consolidation simply might need more time here for the IWM but in the short term it is a little messy a little bit heavy here as it starts to kind of break and resolve the past four or five days trading to the downside fall back into this range and a retest of say 150 or so in the coming week or, or two wouldn't be unreasonable and again it wouldn't be uh, the most bearish thing in the world to kind of come back down and retest these lows and carve out a, a more you know um, you know extended multi-month consolidation after this 30% rip off of the lows from December. So uh, IWM on the week was let's see what the performance was 1.29% lower. So notably sort of underperforming there, still holding above last week's lows. But you can see basically you know kind of a, a you know at, at best a neutral spot here. Uh, but I'd say the sellers kind of getting a little bit of um, you know, getting emboldened a little bit here towards the end of the week based on the volume pickup and breakout and rate breakdown and range. Uh, we do have, uh, you know, a little bit of rally off these lows. So it's tough waters. I think either way, it's 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 going to be, um, you know, a, a tough setup to trade, but we got earnings coming out. So of course, you know, uh, we, we have catalysts on deck to, to sort of move those markets around uh, as as they so please. And the NASDAQ 100 is, is certainly more kind of, uh, you know, escape velocity here, really kind of uh, just levitating higher kind of ignoring no real weakness i mean this looks much much different breaking out to new highs versus an iwm stuck in a range you know 20 percent off of highs so we know where you know general overall leadership has been and again most of these heavyweights in this uh in this index here for the nasdaq 100 will be reporting uh between next week and 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 the following week so again expect uh we'll, we'll see how justified this rally is into these earnings reports so just be aware uh, as we've kind of, um, you know, moved up in, into thin air here, we do have uh, those reports on deck. So all in all, kind of a mixed bag in the short term, overall, longer term or intermediate term, trends are still holding up. Uh, bulls still have control here as, as much as people may hate it. S&P 500, Qs, uh, Dow Jones even now starting to or continuing to work themselves higher. IWM is certainly where uh, at least the sellers can uh, hang some hat on in terms of... Um, you know, in terms of market stalling out. So uh, that's uh, that's everything I think I had to say on the on the majors. Let's go to TLT next. We'll start to cover some of these other uh, markets here. We've got TLT, which did see a bit of a reversal this week. Uh, minor one just kind of probed lower a little bit and uh, rallied and, and kind of finished positive on the week. This is where we would want, we would expect, uh, or we would hope those bulls step in and support TLT if they are going to keep this trend alive. It's the 123 area we've been talking about it's effectively multi-year inflection point we broke out from it a few weeks ago we checked back to it now and uh, we're gonna see if this action here can resolve in some type of higher low successful retest we'll look for clues of that next week oil here uh, continues to move sideways and still hold up uh, it's been marching higher it hasn't given anything back trends remain high uh, or up and uh, you know bulls pretty much in control here nice clean range that's developing if this turns into a continuation pattern and we start resolving above 1350 then I got to imagine we should expect higher prices in this trend uh, we do have or we have noted that we are coming back into prior uh, supply back here from 2018 so we do want to be aware of that uh, but for now, short, short term, the trend is still higher here in oil. Natural gas, on the other hand, is not so fortunate. Sellers in control here, continuing this to new year-to-date lows and really starting uh, to challenge and potentially break down some very long-term support around this area. Lots of consecutive sell days just ratcheting up here on heavier volume. So it's not a pretty scene at all for natural gas. Sellers in control doesn't make it an easy short. You know, it has had a pretty extended move down here, but, um, you know, it just is, is really really tough unless you're agile and day trading or doing something short term. Uh, it's a tough place to want to be positioning on the long side. And last but not least, if we look at uh, metals, 
You can see here on the week gold suffering that breakdown minus 1.2%. We talked about it in uh, the midweek video, but we're starting to break down above year to date support, multi month support. As we were looked at this as a potential topping pattern, it looks like it has triggered at this point. Uh, you know, we're, we're basically going to want to see if, if this uh, if this is for real. We're going to look for follow through to the downside. Uh, otherwise, bulls need to get this up and recovering back above 122 in fast order. Uh, but for now, sellers in control here. Tough to want to be a hero trying to buy this. But you know, if we see some sharp move, some you know, kind of false breakdown move here, uh, its potential will keep our eyes open and 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 you know, open to the the realm of possibility. But the but the sellers for for now certainly taking control here, breaking below year-to-date lows. I think the silver lining, or the only reason I'm semi-optimistic there, is is the silver action. Is is we haven't got that breakdown here. Silver is actually kind of holding up and in fact could even argue a little bit of positive divergence here in the in in the MACD where we're starting to you know trade back at uh, these lows back from March but we can see the momentum oscillator up here a little bit higher and you can see we just haven't given up this this breakdown area from the beginning of the year so if silver's an indication maybe there's some hope here for GLD as a potentially false signal again uh, it's still a real tough spot. Certainly nothing uh, I'm involved with or, or, or looking too strongly at, but uh, you know, for entertainment value, I think there's interest there at least uh, for GLD to see how that uh, how that ends up shaking up. So uh, that's it. That's that's what we got for the um, for the major markets. Let's go to some of the sectors now. Let's take a look at what performs here. Semiconductors really just uh, you know escaping here to the upside. Uh, very extended in its move. It's very much a straight line shot, breaking to new all time highs. Getting quite vertical here, uh, based on uh, you know Wednesday Thursday's action. Got kind of a gap up, an inside session here on Thursday. So things are um, pretty extended to new all time highs. MACD is leading here though as well. So um, it's a tough chase it's a tough fight and uh, at this point you know just watch those trends don't overpay and uh, if you're in it you know protect that outstanding risk that's always the job uh, that we as traders face so semis looking good wouldn't want to be a new uh, net new marginal buyer here but uh, it is working out for those longs industrials are a little more actionable in fact we do have a long position here in the XLI outright, uh, this is something we got involved with this earlier in this week, uh, basically looking for a breakout of this kind of uh, pattern right here. We had a nice uh, rally up to the 77 area. We checked back, kind of did a double bottom, rally back up to it pulled back a little bit and now sort of off to the races here. So we're involved in XLI outright, the actual ETF here that we're looking at, kind of targeting or looking at a potential retest of prior all-time highs. I like it. Uh, it's, of course, now based on, on Thursday's action, a little more extended and a tougher chase, uh, but we currently have that long position in looking for more uh, as this has this has sort of um, you know emerged as uh, more of the uh, leadership group or rotational group uh, that's in favor as of recently. Financials, top three, uh, third best performer this week. You can see here also working through some prior resistance. There's a lot of overhead supply around this 27 area, but for now, XLF, after reporting a lot of some of those uh, high-profile banks or, uh, reports, is cutting through this. It is holding up so far, so financials working through some resistance and moving higher. On the downside, it's biotech. This is where all the weakness was this week. Uh, you can see just a tremendous amount of volume coming in, breaking down from year-to-date levels here. The support had been holding for uh, all of this year, and we came kind of uh, rocketing through it on Thursday or on Wednesday session and then followed through on Thursday. Tough spot to be right now, even if we do get some type of recovery short-term snapback. Uh, Got to respect sort of the, uh, you know, this type of uh, movement we saw here and uh, what what it potentially could mean for a future move. So IBB, not a good spot to be. It's certainly oversold in the short term, but it's in rough waters. And XLV is pretty much the same thing. We had this series of higher lows, lower highs that we identified uh, in our past videos. That ended up resolving to the downside. And again, just like IBB, it's certainly extended in its move, but it does not bode well for this sector overall. At, at the very least, it's going to need some time moving sideways to work this off. But um, 
you know, if you're active based on Friday, Thursday session, maybe you get some type of tradable short term bounce, but would not want to be uh, overstaying my welcome in that in that market. Uh, last but not least, uh, we're, uh, bottom three is IYR. Uh, this broke this trend line here on Tuesday, or is this Wednesday? I'll leave this shortened week has got my days messed up. So this is Tuesday's breakdown, follow through Wednesday, a little bit of a reversal here on Thursday. You know, IYR has been on a pretty epic run up here, broke to new highs just a couple of weeks ago. So a little bit of check back here isn't too, um, you know, it, it isn't, uh, shouldn't be that surprising, but you know, the volume profile down here has a little bit left to be desired for the bull case. You can see a lot of uh, what many would consider distribution days, down days on heavier volume over the past month or two. There's lots of them down there. So we do want to be a little bit cautious here. I mean, certainly in the short term, momentum is out of this. So we're going to need to see if bulls can put in a higher low, but a little bit of check back again, a move down to 83 and change to retest this support from March really uh, would not be, you know, too surprising in my eyes. So uh, we'll have to see how that plays out next week. So that's it. That's what I got for this week. Again, earnings season is uh, in full swing next week. So be aware of that. Watch those dates of any of those individual companies that you earn, that you own. Uh, otherwise, enjoy the weekend. Thanks so much for tuning in and watching. You can subscribe on our YouTube channel or, or follow us on the Trade Risk blog. Thank you so much. Have a good weekend and we'll talk to you next video update.